Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 27, 28. You are the body of the anointed one. That's Lord Jesus Christ. And each one of you is unique and a vital part of it. Verse number 28. God is first place in the church. First the apostles, second the prophets, third teachers, and then those with the gifts of miracles, gifts of divine healing, gifts of revelation knowledge, gifts of leadership. Yeah, show us the next portion please. And the different kinds of tongues. In the world, you need to go to different places for different things. For example, if you need a provision, where do you go? These days we don't go, we do the blankets. Now, if you need a medical help, where do you go? You go to the hospital. If you need counseling, you need to go to places like that. But church is the only institution or the living organization or organ in the whole world where whatever a man leads in life is there in this wonderful place called as the body of Christ. If you can recognize this, understand this, and understand the value of this, you will be a so happy, excited, thankful that you are born again, spirit-filled, and part of the body of Christ. It is an efficient office in the church for you to understand that the body of Christ is a place of healing and it is also a place where healing is ministered. This message, that is why I took, put two headings today, prophets and healing. So in the body of Christ, don't look at just Pastor Anish Mano Stephen for a healing this morning. You're going to look at Jesus, but God will use the prophets in the church to speak to you and those words will be healing in your life. Now, many people, because in the world, just like us, how sin is there, sickness also can follow us. But the word of God is really powerful and released by the prophetic office, which can bring healings and miracles and signs and wonders in your life. If you look at the Bible, prophets are people who spoke on behalf of God. The Hebrew word for prophets is Nabi. So God speaks through his word. Number two. How does God speak? God speak to you directly. It could be through audible voice, visions, dreams, and so on. Number three, God uses people to speak to you. Who are they called as? Prophets. The Hebrew word for prophets is Nabi, which is commonly used by the Islamic religion. The Hebrew word is Nabi. Nabi doesn't just mean a person speaking on behalf of God. It is a channel of God's voice. Just like as dream is a channel of God's voice, just like as vision is a channel of God's voice, prophecy or prophetic office is also a channel of God's voice. But many a times we don't give much importance to it until we read the prophecy mentioned in Joel chapter 2, verse number 28 to 32, which was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, verse number 17 and 18. In the last days, sons and daughters shall prophesy. You see that first word? But today, unfortunately, in the church only the pastor prophesies. And everyone is looking for pastors. So we are coming into such a system in the new covenant where we are not understanding in the body of Christ there are prophets. And God wants sons and daughters to prophesy. The sons and daughters of the body of Christ will prophesy. Those who are standing strong, those who are standing in the apostolic leadership, because if you see the word, first the apostles, and then the prophets, and then the gifts of various healings in the body of Christ. I don't want any of us to focus on only one person today and say, pastor is going to prophesy and release healing. No, in the church today, the Holy Spirit is going to open up certain sons and daughters in the church who will be used by the Almighty God to prophetically declare healings, to prophetically declare miracles, to prophetically declare signs which will happen in your life. Come on, if you're responding, you need to respond well to the Holy Spirit. You need to speak in tongues. So that the Holy Spirit will speak to your spirit and you will be able to get it in your hearts. Now this is where we have the challenge. What is the challenge? The challenge of unworthiness. Pastor, I can't. So there was this great man of God. His name was Isaiah. And he was seeing a great vision. He was a holy man, by the way. He was a prophet of God. He's seeing a great vision. And as he's seeing the glory of God, he says, I am an unworthy man. 
But as he said that I am an unholy man, a man with unclean lips, the Bible says an angel of God was sent. He picked up a coal from the altar of God and he put it on his tongue and he was made clean. This morning I want to tell you, we are living in a world where the mind, heart, our eyes and our mouth have become unholy because of the words that we have been using. But the Holy Spirit is looking for a generation where your tongues will be holy, which will be only used to prophesy, to declare God's word, to declare the power of the Almighty God, not even to utter any bad thing of the world. So Isaiah, when he says that clean my lips, it's just not the bad words that we speak. If you are using your tongue to speak the plans of the enemy, to negate God's plan, that cannot be a prophetic. But this morning I am praying in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be a cleansing anointing of the Holy Spirit onto your lives. Your tongues will be cleansed by the Holy Spirit. That whatever you speak will come to happen. If you believe it, come on, clap your hands, give glory to Jesus. In the Bible, 133 prophets, including 16 women. And how do you know the balance between man and a woman? It is one is to one because at the time of Lord Jesus Christ, two prophets received Jesus at the temple of dedication. One was Simeon and the lady's name was Anna. So it is always one is to one. Family, how will it prophesy? Husband and wife has to prophesy. Only then the family life will be beautiful. The family life will be balanced. The ministry in the family life will be balanced. Otherwise, what will happen? Only the wife will get all the dreams. She will go on the left side track. And God wants to go on the right side track. There will be no balance. Now, prophets were used to release many things. But one of the primary things that God used prophets was for healing. Jesus was called as a prophet in the Bible. He was not recognized as the Messiah first because his ministry was resembling the prophet. What was it? He was becoming the voice of God and healing miracles were happening. It is not healing miracles which made Jesus the son of man. Please understand that. It is not healing miracles which attested that Jesus was the son of God because it was the prophetic office which was releasing healing after healing. So every time people saw something in him, they were saying that he is a prophet. There are many, many verses in the Bible where Jesus is called as a prophet. In, in fact, Jesus himself told about his life. Jesus said, Jesus did not say a man of God lacks, you know, honor in his hometown. What did Jesus say? A prophet is not honored in his hometown. About what, whom was Jesus speaking? Jesus was speaking about himself. So Jesus himself is saying, I'm moving in a prophetic anointing. And how did Jesus heal people? Jesus healed. Your faith is done. You are healed. Every time he spoke, miracles happened. Jesus looked at the centurion and said, your servant will be all right. All right. Jesus looked at Jairus and said, hey, why are you doing? He used the Nike word, just believe. Nike says, just do it. But Jesus said, just believe. Whatever Jesus said, it happened. This has to be in an office from the church. That is where I am coming to. How, do, how will it operate? It has to operate from the church. From where will it operate? It will operate from the sons and daughters of the church. It will operate from the pastors of the church. It will operate from the leaders of the church. It will operate from anyone who believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is where we as a church should come through, come to, we as a family should come to, we should become a channel of God's blessings. God's blessings. As whatever we say will happen. Matthew chapter 21 verse number 11. So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. People addressed him as Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Luke chapter 7, verse number 16. Write down these references if you want to learn. The fear came upon all. They glorified God. A great prophet has risen upon us and God has visited his people. You see those exclamations and the words that people spoke about Jesus? Look at the next word. John 4, 19. The woman said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Mark chapter 6, verse number 4. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives and his own house. You know why the miracle was not executed? Honoring the prophetic office in the church is very much needed for you to be blessed. Amen. Many times we are not able to honor the prophetic office of the Almighty God in the church. We love to come to worship. We love to give tithes to the church, mission works. But if there is a prophetic voice 
which is just not healings which is just not miracles it would be a correction it could be a advice it could be a suggestion this morning we had a suggestion and if that is not been taken fully with heart there is no honor for the prophetic office so when there is no honor the miracles what god wanted to release through that prophetic office will not happen in our lives now if you study the deep word healing in the bible it has an another beautiful english word which says transformation or conversion from one state to an another the word healing in the bible from the prophetic office can transform you convert you restore you to god's high and elevated plans in life so in the church this is the speaking is not just for the pastor it is for every anointed one that is why i normally tell you should be very careful as what we speak inside the presence of god in the church because if you speak something negative it will happen if you speak the word of god it will happen if you speak blessings it will happen that is why bible is the only book religious book which has words of blessings again and again have you ever seen any other religious prayer meeting ending with a benediction you will not see you know why because there is no word of blessing in it but christians end their prayer in benediction because when i say now the grace of lord jesus christ the love of god the father and the presence of the holy spirit be with you or now may the lord make his face shine upon you may the lord bless you out of zion those are words of blessings it's prophetic it releases healings upon your life First Kings chapter 17 verse number 17 to 24 Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him right time that we prayed for covid-19 healings so she said to Elijah what have i to do with you man of god have you come to my to bring sin to remembrance and to kill my son you see this unworthiness was there in the bible right there in the bible this unworthiness is there verse number 19 and he took her give me your son so he took him out and stretched and carried to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on the bed that's honor honoring the prophetic office verse number 20 verse number 20 then he cried out to the lord and said oh lord my god have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom i lodge by killing her son you see the prophet was staying in the house here verse number next verse next verse please and let the oh god i pray let this child's soul come back to him 22 then the lord heard the voice of elijah and the soul of child came back to him and he revived honoring and moving in a presence of a prophetic office or a prophetic church always releases complete healings in your life i told you healing is just not physical healing bringing people back to life now many of us might be thinking pastor in our church are people getting resurrected all of you are resurrected people only because the bible says in roman 6 you have been crucified now we are buried with jesus now we are a new creation second kings chapter 4 verse number 18 to 37 second kings chapter 4 verse number 18 to 37 and the child grew now it happened that one day he went out his father to the reapers and he said to my my head my head and she said to the servant carry him on his mother and when he had taken him brought him his mother sat on his knees till noon and then he died She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God shut the door upon him and went out then she called her husband and said please send me one of the young man one of the dog and run to the man of God and come back and she said why are you going to him it's neither new moon nor sabbath and she said it is well then she sat in the dog and said to the servant drive and go forward do not slack in the pace for me unless i tell you and she departed went to the man of god at the mount carmel it is when the man of god saw her she said gave her see look the shanamite woman is coming please run to meet her and say to her is it well is it well with your husband is it well with your child she answered it is well verse number 20 said now when she came with the man of god at the hill she caught him by the feet but gave he came to push her but the man of god said let her alone for her soul is in deep distress the lord has hidden it from me and has not told me verse number 28 so i asked the son of the lord did i not say do not deceive me 29 and then he said get yourself ready and take the staff in your hand and be you meet anyone don't greet if anyone greets you do not answer but lay my staff at the face of the child 30 and the mother of the child said as the lord lives as you solely i will not leave you so he arose and followed her 31 now gaze he went ahead and laid the staff on the face but there was neither voice nor hearing therefore he went back to meet him and said the child has not awakened 
Verse number 32. The Elisha came to the house. There was a child lying dead on his bed. 33. He went in therefore shut the door where two of them prayed to the Lord. And verse number 34. And he went up and lay on his child and put his mouth to mouth, eyes and eyes, hands and hands, stretched himself onto the child and the flesh of the child became warm. 35. He returned back, back, back and forth in the house again and went up and stretched himself out of it. Child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. 37, 36. And he called Gaius. He called the Shalomite woman. She called her and when she came to him, he picked your son. Verse number 37. She went, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground, she picked up her son and went out. 38. And Elisha returned to Gilgal and there was famine in the land. Very simple story for us to understand. But there are three very top secrets in this. And we're going to pray after listening to this. Number one. The blessing of the child itself came to that woman. If you read that passage. She was barren. The blessing itself came because of a prophetic voice. Now the blessing which came died. How many times have we felt the same in the church? We came to Jesus. God said something. God did it. God blessed us. And after some time, we saw the same thing leave our lives. This is how many times it happens. God releases a blessing. God pronounces a blessing. But after some time, we feel that the blessing is dead. But in the name of Jesus, I want to pronounce it over our church in the mighty name of Jesus. That what God has pronounced and released the blessings upon you will come back before November 2024 for the glory of Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody if you believe, you can speak in tongues, clap your hands, give glory to Jesus and believe it over your life. So the first one is that she was blessed by, she never had a child. Who came? Elisha came, stayed in their house, prophetically announced a blessing on her and the blessing came true. Now the same blessing died. But one thing she did, you know what? She didn't break the house which she made for the prophet. In fact, they were living in only one stair, one story, one bedroom house. And when the prophet started coming frequently, they built a second story. It made it two bedroom and they put a table and a chair and everything for Elisha. When the child died, she did not take her to the mortuary. She took the child and kept it in that prophetic atmosphere. It is very important that you are part of a church which has prophetic atmosphere. The prophetic atmosphere has to be honored. Any church honoring the prophetic atmosphere, especially from the apostolic leadership. The apostolic leadership is the key factor. That is why the Bible says in the new covenant, the church is built on the foundation of of apostles and prophets where Jesus is the cornerstone. So it has such great importance to the apostolic leadership in the church and the prophetic office in the church. But when we grow up in traditional churches, the problem is we are Christians, we are born, we take the child to baptism, we grow there, we attend the Sunday school, then we get married, then we die and they have a burial place. That's all. But they're not able to overcome the issues in life. In the year 1989, my father was dying. He was on the deathbed. I still remember that day very clearly. Everyone was crying. Our money couldn't help. My father's only one sister, her husband is a doctor. His father is a doctor. His brothers are doctors. Still, they couldn't help. That is when, for the first time, we experienced Holy Spirit in our house. When we called up the Jesus Calls Prayer Tower in Madras of Uncle DGS. Danakaran, the greatest apostle of the nation of India. One prayer from that prayer tower, a sister, she prayed a soft prayer and she screamed loudly and said, Brother, I can see the hands of Lord Jesus Christ. The same nail pierced hand. It is coming into your room. It's touching your body. Right now you are healed in the name of Jesus. That healed my father 35 years back. He's still alive today. This ministry was started by my father and you're all being beneficiaries of that ministry because the Holy Spirit came through a prophetic office into our house. You know what this sister said? She's not a great prophet. She said, brother, Jesus has healed you. That's a prophetic voice. Check up for yourself. Write your testimony to us. My father didn't die. My father was instantly healed. 1989, July 27. This ministry started on a prophetic office of declaration of healing. How can our church deviate from that great call and purpose? I am praying the declarations made from this apostolic leadership will happen in your life. As long as you stay connected to the Holy Spirit. 
as long as you stay connected with the blood of Jesus, you will see miracles in your life. Number three, what did she do? When she had a problem, she kept on prophetically saying, it is well. If I was in your case, I'm sure that, you know, I didn't have a child for many years, if at all. I did not have a child for many years. God blessed me with a child. And then my child dies. The first thing, I will not even go to that prophet who blessed me with a child. But she goes. She seeks him. And she runs. She's in haste. And the prophet has everything well. She says, it's well. When you are under a prophetic office, learn to speak words of miracles. Even when cancer is there in your body, learn to speak. I am healed by the stripes of Lord Jesus Christ. Even when you are broken, learn to say. Don't say that I am broken again and again. That will make you broken even more and more. Say the prophetic office, I am healed. I am healed. Like this I can talk about innumerable healings. Three things she did. Number one, she honored the prophet. Number two, when the issue came, she went into that prophetic realm. Three, she said it is well. Speak words. Jesus never said a negative word. Jesus never said I can't do it. He said it can be done. 